what's up? I'm DJ Six Myth. You're watching the sit down. Brand new movie to check out Mickey and the Bear. Really good one. Camila Marone, Annabelle Ananasio. Guys, how are you? Nice Hi. to meet you. Really nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How's everything going? <laughs> it's going great. <laughs> it's actually going very well. We're in day two of press. Mm. Uh, so it's very exhilarating. Got your also. stories down, got yeah. all, all your lines down. We're at the yeah. last, the tail end, mm. so you got the, the last of us. Yes. See, that can go either way. Some people are just like, I'm out, that's it, I'm done. Or sometimes it's like, yeah, we get to do this thing one more time. So we'll this see what happens. This is our last here. New York Press interview, so I guess we're I kind of excited because it's all coming to an end. That's true. It's yeah. kind of sad, too. Yeah. Well, how long has this journey been? When did you guys first meet? We met over a year ago in June, and we did like a test day. That was the first day we met in person, and then Cammy was cast in the movie, and yeah. I flew out to Montana when they told me the director wanted to meet me, and I mm. booked the next flight out to Montana, and it was just Annie and I in her Airbnb in Anaconda, <laughs> and she was like, do you want to go through the script and run some scenes? And I was like, I didn't, wasn't prepared at all. I didn't know this was an audition. I thought we were just meeting. Cammie was like, I'm not prepared, and like m every line is memorized. And, and she's right like, off the bat? she like, all the blocking has been, she's like, if you go her? and meet a director, it's usually very formal, and you're yeah. meeting, and you're testing for something, and you're in like a studio, and and you know, you're, they tell you in advance what you're gonna be doing. Mm. I'm not showing up to the director's Airbnb in Montana. I know. Just, <laughs> she's just trying, ripping through lines Just real ripping quick. through lines while she's <laughs> recording me to then uh, contemplate on it and show her friends and family. Exactly. <laughs> they all decide if they like me or not. I, know. I was like, so, I'm just like, gonna cool. record you on right. my iPhone. Is that okay? And she's like, I guess. No pressure. <laughs> yeah, but meanwhile, watch this 100 times over when I leave and decide if I'm right for the role. But she was like, you, you actually were like so prepared, I will say. I don't think you even looked at the script really uh, although you say you didn't and we have different truths mm. <laughs> we have different, different truths. versions of this story <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly but that was when we first met and it was an amazing experience to get to work in montana and like go around the town and shoot videos of cami like walking around it felt very experimental mm. um and then yeah then we shot in august in september and then premiered in March mm -hmm. in South by Southwest, mm -hmm. and then we brought it to Cannes. So <laughs> we've been on this this road for a couple months now. Yeah, that's awesome. Had you guys been to Montana before? I had been uh, on and off for many years because I did a research project out there in 2014 gotcha. on veterans' families, and then fell in love with this small town, and decided to set this story there. Um, and then I had been back and forth kind of after that and then moved out there in June of 2018. So it's home now? Yeah, pretty much. Gotcha. Not, not no, permanently. You, <laughs> like, it's no, not like you moved there. I'm there now. No, I live in Brooklyn still. But, I gotcha. Um, but I, different. I, yeah. I, I moved very different. But I, I was out there for like a third of the year last year. Gotcha. Yeah. So was that the first time for you? Not yeah, I, I had actually never been and it was never something that I was on my, my, my calendar mm. to go to. But I was so shocked when I got there because it's one of the most beautiful places I've been in the country. Yeah. And now I want to buy like a small little shack or something in Montana <laughs> to go spend my summers there. But it's awesome. On, I mean, we were working really hard, but on the weekends I got to do a couple road trips to mm. nearby uh, forests and rivers and lakes. And it was, uh, one just thing was more beautiful than the next thing. And it was the next thing and the next thing. A nice place to escape, right? Yeah. yeah. It almost looks like Switzerland yeah. <laughs> meets like some sort of small town middle America it's, it's really cool hmm. yeah so when you guys think about this movie we're tackling a lot of big issues here veterans coming back from war dealing with mental health opioid crisis you know leaving a small town in general what fascinates you guys the most about this whole story um, I mean I think the heart of this story is the relationship between a girl and her dad and I think it was always really important for me to have that very human relationship at the forefront but all of the themes of the movie and the social issues behind the movie are very pressing issues in this day and age. And so in order to locate this movie to be contemporary and ask myself the question of like, why is this story needing to be told now? I wanted to incorporate, Hang was always kind of meant to be this veteran character and this kind of like self-governing man. Mm. Um, and then in terms of his dependency on pills, I thought that it was an opportunity to discuss this larger issue in our country about pharmaceutical companies and the VA prescribing pills instead of providing any sort of meaningful treatment to vets. Yeah, any sort of real therapy, real right. conversation about what happened. And clearly for Hank, that's exactly what's going on. And also this really codependent relationship with his mm -hmm. daughter, Mickey. So 
what was it like unpacking that relationship and really working through some stuff there? Yeah, I think I worked through stuff from the very beginning of this process. It's definitely an intimidating story to tell. It's an intimidating character to play. We obviously wanted to be respectful and, and do justice to this crisis, which we all know is spreading all over the country and has been for a while now. So I think it was an interesting way of telling a, a veteran story without it just being about Hank. It being about how you know PTSD, how trauma, how addiction affects everyone around the person and, and, and the victim. And uh, I think it was just a, a really great way of showing and telling a new version of a story that's already been told. And on mm. the acting side of it and developing this character, she's a complicated person mm. like every 17 year old kid is, you know, and, and I don't think that at any given moment she knows what her future holds, but ultimately it's the decisions that, it's the decision to leave that is the heart of the story and and the kind of the win of the story. And as much as you want to leave, you're also trapped, not only yeah. from a relationship standpoint, from a financial standpoint, right. you can't leave in a so sense. So that, right? that was the push and pull of the whole story is that there's moments where you want Mickey to stay and take care of Hank because you see his vulnerability and you see how broken this person is and how badly he needs her. And then you also see the other side where you're like, this is completely unhealthy mm -hmm. and inappropriate and this girl needs to leave because she's gonna get trapped here forever. And so we just wanted to make sure that we were playing between those two elements throughout the whole movie. Annabelle, for you, you've been in front of the camera, you've been behind the camera. What were the challenges in putting this all together? Just the will to keep going each day and to be totally relentless about everything. It took a really long time to get this off the ground. It's it's incredibly hard to get movies off the ground, especially as a young female filmmaker. Totally, yeah. And when we finally did get it off the ground, the work only increases in terms of you just, I think you have to wake up thinking of the movie and go to bed dreaming of the movie and you have to just constantly be checking yourself and saying, how can I be more efficient? Um, let me go over the shot list again. Let me rehearse a scene. Let's call, let me call Cammy and go over this thing. Um, I just, I didn't want to rest and I think that's very grueling work. Um, yeah. So I would say that in general was a was a, a challenging part of the process but also very rewarding because you look at you know I look back at the edit and at each decision made in the edit each decision made in each frame was like so intentional and considered um, and that's what I love so much about directing is you can be so intentional about everything you put on screen yeah it's a really cool thing even like the music in the very last scene the lighting of that very last scene like mm -hmm. those are all really specific shots in order to get a really specific feeling in that. And I'm yeah. sure you guys worked a long time to make sure you nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. She showed me, I mean, I read the script and I automatically loved it. And then when Annabelle sent me a, a mood board and kind of what Montana looked like mm -hmm. in the place that we were going to be shooting, because she had all these cool pictures that her and her friend had shot in Anaconda a couple mm -hmm. months and years before. So when I saw that official mood board, it kind of put everything into, into perspective mm -hmm. and, and kind of gave me a taste of what we were going to be going for. That's awesome. There's this moment where your character says, is he ever going to get better? And I wonder, what do you think are the hardest parts in dealing with somebody who's struggling with opioids, who's struggling with PTSD, who's struggling with a, a number of different things like that? I think the hardest part is exactly what Mickey's going through, is how much do you give this person and, and how much is too much? You know, at what point do you step away and you say, okay, I've done everything I can do for this person and now it's up to them to get help. Mm -hmm. I think that in the experience I've had speaking to children of, of parents who struggle with PTSD or, or abuse or veterans or addiction, it's always, you know, the internal battle of, of the kid or the friend or the spouse is, okay, when am I enabling this person? Mm -hmm. When have I uh, put them in a position where I'm no longer helping them? This doesn't serve them mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's ultimately Mickey struggle is how much more of myself do I give this person and how much is, is up to himself to step up to the plate and, and to heal himself. How do you guys think we shift the conversation from the VA system is broken too. We need to have therapy. We need to have more conversations like this. Like, where does that all begin? Well, I think it's shifting the gaze in, in a sense to, I guess, maybe it's not that. I honestly don't know. 
it's a complicated thing. It doesn't yeah. happen overnight, but at least movies like this. St I was going to say, yeah, allow for a starting point here. Yeah, I mean, it, it, throughout history, movies have been such a great way to talk about things, to talk sure. about you know events in the past, to share old times that we weren't here for, and to reenact things and to to spread messages. And that's what I think ultimately a good movie has is a great message behind it. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I don't think you know the intention of this movie is to. Uh, and the opioid crisis or to you know stop the pain and and the mistreatment of veterans but it's just to shed light on a conversation that it just needs to be at the forefront of of what we focus on as a as a world as a country today i gotcha how about james badgedale he's mm -hmm. pretty incredible in this movie mm -hmm. what was it like for you guys working with him phenomenal he's such a brilliant actor and he provided a lot of structure and support for both cammy and myself um how so he just comes in knowing his character, his backstory, and his lines cold, and he does a lot of preparation alone. And so, and he's also very malleable. So on the day, anything can happen. And I think that's what is so magnetic between uh, Mickey and Hank in the movie, is that each of them came in very loose and knowing their backstory, knowing what they had to do very well, but uh, being very open to whatever came on the day. For me, as a relatively new actor, mm -hmm. it's always a plus when you get to work opposite someone that's really going to help you and is mm -hmm. going to be supportive of you. And I think that we were both very scared and, and terrified of this thing that we were taking on because it's different than anything either of us have ever done in our careers. And so for me, it was really great to be able to rely on, on Badge and to know that I had someone there who was looking out for me and who was helping me. Mm -hmm. And since he's so confident in his craft and knows what he's doing because he's been doing this for so long, he really just allowed me to, to explore and he just kind of took a step back and, and let me have whatever I was having. Mm -hmm. I think the cool thing is, because I told you guys he was here, like he's mm -hmm. been that young actor, so he knows what that's like. Yeah. And he wa he's had so many people help him also. So he wants to be that person to make sure everybody's cool and like gets their yeah. deal. You know, it's that, like the roles huge. reverse now. Exactly. Like Badge used to be me on right. set, looking up to the other actors, yeah. and now he's that you know, uh, veteran actor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because, Absolutely. Because some actors just like don't do that. You know, some actors are just like I'm going to do my own thing. Like figure it out yourself. Most actors, especially when you get to a bigger level in Hollywood, I think that everyone's so out for themselves mm -hmm. and there's such big egos involved that I don't think anyone really steps aside to talk to the new actor and say, hey, you know, what do you need? Yeah. How yeah. can I help you? Mm -hmm. uh, let's let's make you feel more comfortable and Absolutely. better. Are the egos the toughest thing to deal with in the business? Like, what, what are the struggles? I wouldn't want to be face? a director dealing with actor <laughs> egos. <laughs> that doesn't sound like fun. What's the cha most challenging thing? I don't know. I guess... You are looked down upon a lot as being a young woman in power, and I think overcoming that is not necessarily like something that I lose sleep over mm -hmm. because I'm very galvanized by people doubting me. Totally. But I think it's it's upsetting at times to see how the inequality is still very present in this industry. But being in a position in a position of power myself, uh, hiring women and telling women's stories and telling stories of people who are othered in their in their lives and circumstances is the joy that I get to embark on. And so it's kind of twofold in that way. Totally. Um, and these are the stories we need also. We need yeah. fresh perspectives. We need to tell it through a different lens because we've had the same types of movies for right. so many decades. Yeah. It's about opening that door and then you're going to open the door to others. Like yeah. That's the way we get this thing going. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not enough people, unfortunately, realize that and how to push yeah. things forward. Yeah, definitely. To me, it's like not even... It's like these perspectives, ha these stories have just been going on forever and they're mm -hmm. just not told, they're not me memorable, they're not made memorable by our world because there's so much more uh, credence put on men's stories. Right. And so that's why it was really important for me to tell, you know, it's always the father-son narrative. Right. I think to tell father-daughter narrative is very uncommon. Um, and it's a subtle thing, it's not like breaking any new ground, it's a story that I loved that it would be something that many people had experienced and might be familiar with. Um, it's only groundbreaking in the sense that Hollywood doesn't really greenlight movies that are about a young woman. Mm -hmm. Or the uncomfortable aspects of a father-daughter relationship because mm -hmm. we've right. seen the really happy-go-lucky story where the father and daughter are in it together and they're doing the thing. This is quite the opposite mm -hmm. of that. So yeah. I can understand. So yeah. when you did finally get it greenlit and you go through South by Southwest and Cannes and all that, like what has been the best part of the whole journey for you guys? 
I think the most rewarding part of this journey is that we all went in there with the most wholesome, positive intentions. I mean, you're making an independent film. No one's getting rich off this film. Right. You don't think that you're in this to get anything other than a, a, a creative outlet and the opportunity to tell something that's interesting. And I think that the response that we've gotten, the fact that this film is even in theaters today in this country, and the fact that the, we've been able to take been able to take this film to Cannes, and that we're taking it to Morocco, and that we've wow. been everywhere in America, it feels like, with this movie. Mm -hmm. It's just surpassed all of our expectations. And it's such a nice pat on the back when you, you really believe that you're making something great. But, you know, a lot of these movies come out a year, and they get, you know, small independent films get just swept under the rug, and mm -hmm. they go to a big streaming network, and, and you never see them. And so I just feel really lucky, and, and has all felt kind of surreal that we're you know, able to, to get people's eyes on this movie. Mm -hmm. Totally. What would, totally. what would surprise people the most about making this movie? The experience, you know, anything. <laughs> the porta potties? <laughs> yeah, totally. What was the deal yeah. with the porta potties? Well, behind this, <laughs> <laughs> my trailer was parked here some days, my little hair and makeup trailer, yeah. and then right over here, if you're looking on that side, uh, was the, the common porta potty mm, for all of cast and crew. Wonderful. Yeah. That's a top notch spot right Cold there. porta potty. Yeah. <laughs> this place didn't have any water or heating, so oh, there was no man. toilet use there. Yeah. <laughs> you were really out there. I'm telling you, we weren't there to be rich and famous. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't glamorous. Cammy, can I pee in your trailer, please? Yeah, I would hear, like, yeah. knocks on my trailer, and she's like, can I come use your bathroom, please? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get when you're making a independent film. Yep. Yeah, we were, it's very true. <laughs> See, that's the stuff that nobody ever talks that's about. That's the stuff I, I love asked. hearing it. You no know? one asked us about our porta potty, so I'm glad that someone asked. Exactly. Yeah. See, I promised I'd get a little something different yeah. out of you guys, and we'll end it right there with porta potty. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> right. so Thank you so much. You got it. Today, Thank right? You. In theaters today? Yes. In theaters today at Film Forum. Okay, cool. Good deal. Check it out, Mickey and the Bear. We'll see you next time here on the sit down. Thank you.